according to statistics, and Superman, flying is the safest way to travel. But that still doesn't stop weather, personal phobias, and other passengers from ruining the experience. While we can't keep all of these outside forces from keeping your plane trip more turbulent, we can give you these things you should never do on a plane. By starting with yourself, you can make sure you don't ruin the flight for others, and maybe they'll pay it forward in turn. And while we're at it, click on the subscribe button. It's like the button above your seat that summons the flight attendants. Only here, you'll be calling on super fascinating videos from the hub for your daily enjoyment. Never forget to buckle your seatbelt. First and foremost, there's a reason this is part of the pre-flight spiel all those flight attendants give. It's essential to keep your seatbelt buckled as long as the overhead light is lit. It's not just an excuse to keep you seated. Turbulence can hit at any time during a flight, and the captain will flick on the fastened seatbelt light as soon as it's needed. Still, some people only think that seatbelts are on planes so that you can be found strapped to your seat in the event of a crash. This isn't true. According to the Federal Aviation Administration, only 234 turbulence-related accidents were filed between 1980 and 2008, which is a good thing when you consider the sheer amount of flights taking off and landing during that nearly 30-year period. However, some of those resulted in serious injuries because passengers had not been wearing seatbelts. The plane hit turbulent winds and the passengers were sent flying out of their seats. You'd be surprised how far just a slight dip in altitude will send you flying through the plane's cabin, hitting your head on the ceiling or jostling about and hurting other passengers. It seems like a non-issue, but with flight-related injuries still happening on an irregular basis, you should always be prepared for sudden changes in the atmosphere. Never get in a fight. Obviously, you should just avoid confrontation. Fighting over whose elbow got on the armrest first for a several hour long flight isn't worth punching someone over. But, if you do get in a verbal altercation with someone, try to de-escalate the situation. You don't want to get kicked off the plane or be blamed for an emergency landing. Then you'll have to deal with an entire flight's worth of angry passengers once you're back on the ground. And you never know, your flight may have an air marshal on board who will see any altercation as grounds to detain you. While you can never be sure if a marshal is in fact flying on your plane, the flight crew will know and will defer to them in any case when passenger safety is threatened. Usually sitting towards the back of the plane, marshals try to remain as inconspicuous as possible. But if they're wearing a coat on a flight to the Caribbean, you should be able to spot them. The deciding factor for whether air marshals join a flight is a computer probability program that uses several different factors to determine the threat potential on a given plane trip. So try to stay off their radar. We are very excited to announce the Premium Network. The Premium gets you early access to videos from The Richest, Screen Rant, The Taco, The Sportster, The Things, and many other great channels. Literally thousands of videos in one place with ad-free browsing. Check out the premium by clicking this link. Sign up for free and start binge watching videos from your favorite channels. Never keep your electronic devices turned on. At this point, we've come far enough along with technology that we don't necessarily need to worry about a last minute text or a sent email screwing with the plane's equipment. But it's still common courtesy to turn off larger devices and put your cell phone on airplane mode during takeoff and landing. The fear is that the radio waves emanating from portable electronic devices will scramble any signals communicated between flights and ground control if you're within 10,000 feet of the sea level. The surprising thing is, recent studies held by the Radio Technical Commission for Aeronautics have indicated that your devices probably don't have a major impact on the plane's equipment. Regardless, the FAA still urges caution and requires all electronic devices to be inactive as an added safety measure. While companies like Apple, Samsung, and Microsoft are bringing new changes to commercial electronics on a daily basis, airlines are evolving at a much slower rate and there's no telling what kind of effect a new technology will have on older aeronautic equipment. It's better to be safe than sorry at 10,000 feet in the air. Never bring bad hygiene with you. This should go without saying. If you're rubbing elbows with strangers for several hours, or more than several hours if traveling internationally, at least try taking a shower sometime before embarking. Treat the airplane like you would any other form of travel. And please, try not to take your bare feet out and about. Sure, you may want to air out some parts cooped up in dark sweaty sneakers, but let that be your personal struggle rather than the entire cabins. Also, due to the quick turnover experience by many airlines, it's helpful to carry some hand sanitizers with you, and it can't hurt to bring some water-free facial cleansers along for the ride. Apply it to any bit of exposed skin to steer clear of rogue bacteria. You're likely to encounter more bacteria in certain areas of the plane that experience less attention from the cleaning crew, and you want to do your part to keep from getting any gross ailments lurking on the plane. Look, it's not a 16th century pirate ship, and you probably aren't getting scurvy, but who wants to pay $300 for a plane ticket only to get a three-day long cold? Never fly without sunscreen. Beyond washing regularly, 
You might be surprised to hear that if you travel more than 20,000 air miles per year, you should slather on the sunscreen as well. Frequent flights at those altitudes expose you to more UV radiation than you would experience at ground level, increasing your risk of premature aging and other skin issues. Doctors recommend at least applying sunscreen with an SPF of 15 to 30 every two to four hours. You are 30,000 feet closer to the sun after all. And since those windows don't do you any favors, direct sunlight while in a window seat can have a strong impact on your skin. As noted by the American Academy of Dermatology, there's a higher rate of skin cancer cases among airline pilots when compared to the average population. While living their days at constantly changing altitudes and jet setting regularly through multiple different time zones can certainly change up their circadian rhythms, impact their daily health, and serve as a possible cause for increased health risks, the closer proximity to the sun's rays certainly don't help matters. But if you're flying to Hawaii, you don't need to wear a full bodysuit to protect you from ultraviolet radiation, just be extra mindful. Never touch anything. Okay, we're exaggerating here, but still, be aware that on most airlines, many of the areas within arm's reach aren't given a disinfectant scrub down between each flight, particularly the floor area. While you could and should rest your carry-on luggage on the floor beneath your seat, be a bit more cautious when, say, your unsuspecting toddler starts wandering around the lower section of the plane. Also, watch out for the tray table. It's just as easy to rest your food, drink, or laptop on it as it is for you to cough or sneeze on it. And that in-flight entertainment system is just within coughing distance. And don't even think about leaning your head on that window for a nice little nap. There are germs all over the place. Sure, this sounds like the ravings of a germophobic lunatic, but hey, you can never be too careful. If you're just a casual flyer looking to relax, there's no need to be too obsessive about it. Just be cautious about drinking any beverage with hot water, like tea or coffee, due to the infrequency with which airlines have been known to clean their water tanks. Probably best to stick to canned drinks if you ask us. Never sit too long. If you're on a particularly long flight, let the blood circulate throughout your body. Basically, if you see an opening in the bathroom, it's better to take the break rather than wait it out. Since the plane is flying with low air pressure, the rate of blood flow is reduced and can even lead to clotting in some older and less healthy passengers. Tight clothing also contributes to decreased blood flow. So try to stay loose and stretch your legs every now and then. Now, if you're young, spry, and relatively fit, you probably have nothing to worry about. And if you happen to also be sitting in a window seat, it's probably best if you don't get up constantly to head to the bathroom. That's no fun for anybody. Speaking of circulation, doctors actually recommend that you keep the air vent over your head open to keep the surrounding air from feeling stale and even blow away some airborne germs. And don't get too paranoid about stale airplane air. Many people think the air you take off with is the air you have for the flight, but actually 50% of the air on board is taken from the outside as you fly. It's absorbed by the plane's outtake valves, warmed by the engines, and circulated through the plane for your consumption. Never recline your seat too far back. At least, don't recline to a 180 degree sleeping position if there's someone sitting behind you. If someone is behind you and you feel like you're going to hit their knees, or they're eating some tiny pretzels or blue chips, let them snack in peace. Who wants to have a tray table full of trail mix and soda come crashing down on their lap without warning? That said, if you're any age above 2 years old, you have no excuse for kicking the seat in front of you. We don't care if your nerves are acting up, buy yourself a drink, do some breathing exercises, and lull yourself to sleep. And if you're one of the third of passengers on a flight who's stuck in the middle seat, then good luck to you. According to a recent study by the Global Strategy Group, over 50% of Americans would rather go to a dental appointment than sit in the middle seat on a plane. If you're one of those people, try booking tickets early before getting stuck with the scraps of whatever seats are remaining. Never forget to drink water. Although we told you to watch out for tea, coffee, and any other drink coming from the hot water tank on board, never turn down a sip of bottled water. When on a plane, it's always a good idea to hydrate whenever possible. Due to the air pressure of a commercial jet's cabins, the humidity is incredibly low and will dry you out if you're not careful. Planes are pressurized so they replicate the same air pressure you'd find at the highest breathable altitudes on Earth's surface, between 6,000 and 8,000 feet above sea level. That's why, in a day full of multiple connecting trips, flight attendants are recommended to drink a full 16 ounces of water. If these professionals are doing it, why can't you? If you're old enough, feel free to throw some alcoholic drinks in the mix, but know that you're not going to get drunker on fewer drinks in the air. According to a study in the 1930s, two to three beverages enjoyed at around 12,000 feet were equal to four or five beverages on the ground. It seemed like a good deal at the time, but thanks to changes in cabin pressure and modern aviation technology, drinks in the sky work about the same as drinks on the ground nowadays. Never be rude to flight attendants. Don't expect flight attendants to stow your carry-on for you. They'll help you whenever and wherever they can, but first try to help yourself. 
and during the flight, use the button when you need their attention, but don't overuse it. Standard practice is usually more than once in a single flight, unless there's an actual emergency going on. If you have an actual disability, they should be aware of you and where you're sitting prior to boarding, so they can provide assistance to you, usually before you even need to ask. They're not your waiter or waitress, they're your service specialist with a variety of important responsibilities. Beyond making you feel comfortable, they monitor the mood of the cabin and ensure you're traveling safety. Next to the pilot, co-pilot, and navigator, who are in charge of literally keeping you from falling 30,000 feet, these people are your next line of defense, and they deserve some respect. Although you'd think they control the weather considering how much huffing and puffing goes on in a cabin if a flight is delayed over an incoming storm, they have a simpler and more essential function. These people are trying their damnedest to get you where you need to go on time and in one piece. Most of us have been on a plane at least once in our lives, and if we can all agree to be courteous and respectful, that will probably make the trip go by faster and smoother. If everybody relaxed, tried acting as upright as their tray tables, there'd probably be less people doing the things you should never do on a plane. Once you land and turn your mobile and portable electronic devices back on, come back and visit your friendly neighborhood aviators at the hub. See you soon!